The M55 motorway opened in 1975, and when they built it, they sort of didn't build Junction 2. After 48 years of the M55's operation, they finally got around to installing this missing junction. But why didn't they build the junction in the first place? Well, to answer that, we need to look back at the original intention behind the missing, now not missing, Junction 2. Junction 2 was part of a larger plan involving the construction of an additional motorway that would have been called the M59. If you've never heard of the M59, don't worry about it, because they never built it. Had they gone ahead with their original ideas, the M59 would have been a motorway that linked the M58 to the southwest side of Preston, where it would connect to a major road known as the West Preston Bypass. It's possible that this bypass could have also been part of the M59, allowing for a proper motorway connection between Liverpool and Preston, which is probably quite handy. Not only that, there were also plans for a southern bypass that would allow a link to the M6 via the M65 motorway. When complete, there would have been motorways surrounding Preston on all sides, making for some excellent transport links. You probably wouldn't want to live there, though. No bother, though, because it was all cancelled. Whilst they'd spent the money and gone to all of the trouble of putting together these elaborate plans, there was never any guarantee that they would have been given permission to build it. And they weren't given permission, so the plans were generally filed, leaving us with an M55 motorway that's missing its junction too. Until now! As of the 3rd of July 2023, Junction 2 on the M55 is open for business, but how did this all come about given that they'd cancelled the plans all those years before? Like many towns and cities across the country, Preston is seeing several new housing estates being constructed in a desperate effort to meet whatever target the local council is being set, and accordingly Preston can expect to see a fair few thousand houses being added here, here, here and here, and here, here as well, and here, and here, and here. And here. With the addition of more houses comes more residents and more traffic, which the current road system around Preston just can't support. If only there was once a plan to build sufficient road connections in the area. I don't know, maybe a motorway connecting Liverpool and Preston. Oh yeah, of course, the plan that they threw in the bin. In 2013, they must have rediscovered it because in preparation for all of this new housing, proposals were put forward to build a new link road that would run alongside the west side of Preston. We could perhaps call it the West Preston Bypass, but we won't because that's far too similar to the original plan, and instead we're going to call it the Preston Western Distributor Road. To be fair, they only copied about 25% of the original plan, focusing their attention on the missing Junction 2 of the M55 and a link road that would run down to the A583 on the southwest side of Preston. The new junction and link road provides a much faster connection to the M55 motorway, and with housing construction along the new stretch of road estimated to run into the thousands, it's probably about time. £207 million pounds later, and the new bypass and junction are complete. The bypass has been called Edith Rigby Way after a famous Preston suffragette. It's around two and a half miles long and connects the A583 to the M55 and at the motorway end we find a roundabout that has no other connections other than the bypass itself. Eventually the roundabout will be connected up to residential estates either side totaling around 1200 houses but that's just the start. Over the next 20 years we can expect to see 6,000 houses added up and down the length of Edith Rigby Way. Like any new road construction project there are a few losses to be expected and one of the losses was the Saddle Inn that used to sit on Seagreaves Lane. The inn can trace its beginnings as far back as the 1600s, but the final landlord vacated, or should I say was kicked out, in October 2021, with the building being levelled to make way for the new road shortly after. The brewery who owned the premises, pocketing quite a nice profit in the process, no doubt. In its place now sits the finest of service stations, offering a sense of community like no other, with its Starbucks and petrol station. The new road necessitated the construction of two viaducts, the 278 metre long Savick Brook Viaduct, which carries the road over a floodplain, and the shorter 233 metre long Lee Viaduct. The Lee Viaduct carries the road over the Lancaster Canal, a 42 mile long canal that opened in 1797. Not long after though, in 1840, the Preston and Wire Railway would come along, and this really pissed off the canal owners. The railway was faster and could transport more material, resulting in some fierce competition that led to several arguments between the railway and canal companies. In 1850, they reached some sort of agreement that would see the railway transport passengers and general merchandise, whilst the canal would transport coal and heavier goods, ensuring a decent profit for all. This didn't go as well as they'd hoped, though, and would last until around 1858, by which time they'd all had enough of one another. It took a little while, but in 1885, the railway company decided to buy the canal company, ending all of their problems, and they'd use and maintain the canal right up until 1947. 
I digress. Back to the roads, and the Edith Rigby Way comes to an end where it meets the A583. However, this might not be the end of the story. Remember earlier when we mentioned the original Western Bypass plans for Preston? Part of that would have needed a road bridge to be built over the River Ribble, and it seems that in 2019 feasibility studies were conducted to see if this was still a possibility. It turns out that yes, it is a possibility, and if built it would see a link road connecting Edith Rigby Way to the A59, allowing for a complete bypass of Preston. But there's a problem. The study was conducted by an independent company, and whilst this isn't an issue in itself, it does mean that it was merely a study just to see if it could be done. The decision as to whether it would go ahead or not is down to the local council who have said, well, if the government pay for it, sure, why not? Otherwise, it's a no. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.